I trust you did well on those quizzes. How many think you did pretty well? Like you did pretty well? All right. We'll take a look at them tomorrow in our next lesson. Um, next thing you need to notice, we've been talking a lot about vector um, composition, where we've taken two vectors, right, and we've transposed them into a single resultant, right? We've taken two concurrent vectors. This happens, this happens. What's the outcome? We even did one with three, you might remember, where there was the, the current going this way and the wind going this way and the boat was going this way and the resultant was here. And there were three of them, right? Well, what if we had three vectors and one was going this direction, one was going this direction, and one was going that direction? You can't make a triangle out of those. Well, actually, these kind of look collinear, don't they? Maybe that's a bad example. How about, ah, eh, still kind of looks collinear. That direction, <laughs> okay. They're all acting at once, right? Well, it's kind of hard to make a triangle if you already have three vectors. Where do you put the resultant? You get kind of this weird polygon. Like if this is the primary, and that's secondary, and that's tertiary, that's not a triangle, is it? So what we're going to have to be able to do, in order to expand our ability to solve vector problems, is we're actually going to take Rather than two vectors combined to make one, take a single vector and split it into two. Here's the idea. If I can take one vector like this, here's a question. Let's suppose this is not north, south, east, west. Let's suppose this is actually like throwing a ball. And when you throw a ball, you throw it up into the air, right? Hopefully not straight up. But if you throw it perfectly level, it tends to drop a little in the air. So probably for a longer pass, you'd arc the pass, right? And so it comes out of your hand like this. Are you throwing it forward or are you throwing it upward? Yes. You're throwing it forward and you're throwing it upward. Some of this movement is upward movement. Some of the movement's forward movement. And that's what we're going to get to in the next section. You know, it's vector resolution. Vector resolution. Breaking a single vector into perpendicular components. Breaking a single vector into perpendicular components. Breaking a single vector into perpendicular components. That's vector resolution. Let's go and think about the north, south, east, west of it all. Let's suppose some ship was trying to travel north of east. Suppose there was a current that was carrying due east. And suppose there was a breeze, a slight breeze, blowing to the um, south of east. What we would want to do is we could take this vector and say, well, how much of it is east? How much of it's north? Obviously, all of this vector is east. How much of this vector is east? And how much of it is south? And what we end up with, class, is three collinear east vectors. East, east, east. That's a whole lot of east. The north and the south are also collinear, but they're acting in opposite directions. But who wins, north or south? Kind of like the Civil War. North. But a diminished north because of that little bit of south, correct? And so where's the resultant now? Right there. And that's how we're going to be able to solve multiple vector problems. But you have to be able to take each individual vector and turn it into perpendicular components. So you two already have a leg up. Kendall, we revisit you. Let's go back to my, uh, this vector, for instance. And let's suppose um, we've got a, um, something is traveling 25 meters per second at, we'll say, 30 degrees north of east. Okay? Is it moving north or is it moving east, class? Yes. Yes, it is moving north and it is moving east. The question is, this right here is the 25. Some of the 25 is eastward, some of the 25 is northward. Now, we realize these are not going to add up to 25, right? The sum of two sides of a triangle is always greater than the third side. 
there's going to be more individual confidential movement than there will be total movement. So you're going to get something like, say, 15 east and something like 20 north or whatever like that, where you're going to say, that doesn't add up to 25. It doesn't have to, right? Because you're doing both at the same time. Each, the sum of the parts would be greater than the original. Does that make sense? Here's what we're going to do. This vector is the one that's on the slant. The north and east are perpendicular. That's the point of vector resolution. You get perpendicular components. That's going to make your initial vector the hypotenuse of the triangle. Well, let's just start with the east component. With regard to the 30 degree angle, this is the adjacent leg of the right triangle. So if we think, Kendall, so katoa. If we have the adjacent and the hypotenuse, we have the cosine of the angle. We know that the cosine of any angle, in this case a 30 degree angle, is equal to the adjacent, which is our eastward movement, over the hypotenuse, which is the 25 meters per second. Now, in the past, we would use, when we had tangent opposite adjacent, we take the arc tangent to find the angle. I don't need to find the angle. I know the angle. So we're not going to end up using a second function on our sine, cosine, or tangent here. Instead, if I were to think of this as over 1, I can just cross multiply. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the cosine of 30, which on your calculator, you'll like hit 30 cosine. Obviously, U2 would be cosine 30, 30 cosine. Go ahead and do it. And we're going to multiply that value, which should be 0.866, blah, 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 times 25. And we'll find that how quickly east is this object moving, Kendall? 21.6. Twenty one point six five meters per second east. Not quite twenty five because remember some of this movement is carrying it northward, but it's moving pretty quickly east. Some of the movement is carrying it northward as well. The northward movement in the triangle, Kendall, is the opposite leg. Well, if I have the opposite in the hypotenuse, so katoa, that would use the sine. So we would say that the sine of my thirty degree angle is equal to the opposite, the northward movement, over the hypotenuse, the 25 meters per second. Again, if we consider this as being over 1 and we cross multiply, 30 sine times 25. And how quickly northward is this object moving? Meters per second. So every second, how far does this object travel, class? Well, 25 meters, right? But every second, it travels 21.65 meters to the east, and every second at the same time, it's moving 12 and a half meters northward because it's traveling along an angled line. Does that make sense? How about this? Suppose we had an object traveling this direction. Well, this would be south, right? So it is moving south, isn't it? But it's also moving this way a little bit. It's also moving westward a little bit. Let's suppose we have a 20 degree angle here. Suppose it's moving at 12 meters per second. How quickly is it moving south? How quickly is it moving west? Well, the key, Kendall, again, is to look at the angle and to identify which of these components is opposite and which one is adjacent to the 20 degree angle. Good. The west is the opposite, and then the south, that is the... Adjacent. And, of course, the given vector will be the um, hypotenuse. hypotenuse. All right, we have three trig ratios, sine, cosine, tangent, sol, ka, toa. The key is to be able to spell sol, ka, toa. Without looking behind me, can you tell me how to spell sol, ka, toa? Um, opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Now, again, we use the arc tangent to find the direction, right, opposite over adjacent. We've done that before. But for what we're doing here, we're going to need sine and cosine. If you remember so ka, you're going to be fine. So the sine of my 20 degree angle equals the opposite west over the hypotenuse 12. Kendall, how quickly is this object moving west? Four point 
1.104. About 4.1 meters per second westward. Did you two get that as well? Kendall, how would I solve for the uh, southward movement since it's the adjacent? So adjacent south over hypotenuse 12. And what is adjacent over hypotenuse? Uh, of 20. the 20 degrees. How quickly south is this thing moving? 11.276. And there we go. Most of the movement, almost all of the 12 meters per second is southward, right? It's almost going 12 meters per second south. Not quite, almost. We also have a 4.1 meter per second westward movement. Does that make sense? All right, so here's the, the, the strategy. If you're given something written out, for instance, 12.7 miles per hour at 70.0 degrees north of west. Obviously, you're going to have two components to this. One component class is going to be north, and the other component is going to be west. Your key is to draw it and find the two vectors. So start by just drawing it. Draw a 70 degree north of west vector. 70 degree north of west vector. That's the first trick, is to be able to draw it. Which of the two should I draw first, the north or the west? Start with a west. And then, from the west, class go how far? 70 degrees to the north. Now, a 70 degree angle, that's a pretty steep angle, isn't it? So is this thing going more north or more west? It's going more north. There's some north movement, there's some west movement. Here's the 12.7, though, is on the 70 degrees north of west. Did you have that sketch? Does that make sense? All right, now at your seats, find the two components using sine and cosine. So, ka, uh, forget to at the moment. You get 11.9 miles per hour north and 4.34 miles per hour west. Did not get the north. All right, did you say that the opposite over hypotenuse, so the sine of 70 is the north over the 12.7? What did you have? Oh, tangent, okay. Remember, this is the hypotenuse, so we're finding north, we have the hypotenuse. Now, you could try to use this, but if you screwed this up, you're doomed to the next one. So I would not use tangent, because I don't want to mess up a number and use a messed up number to get a more messed up second number. Let's do another one. Let's suppose, um, let's suppose uh, Michael is walking down the hallway and uh, accidentally bumps into a little kid because he's not being careful. And uh, it doesn't hurt the kid, for the record. But when he bumps into the kid, he bumps the kid off at an angle of, um, let's say, not bumps the kid off, that kills him. <laughs> they, they might. Uh, but 30 bumps the kid at an angle 34 degrees uh, south of east. Okay? And suppose he bumps the kid with a force of, let's just say, 45 newtons. Start with a sketch. Sketch it first.
start with east, go 34 degrees to the south. Did you get that? Find the east and find the south. Find the east component, find the south component. <clears throat> Pretend those are perpendicular. We don't trust our eyes. I just realized that that's not drawn too well. <laughs> this evening, I need you to read over pages 102 to 108, and you're going to see how we're going to begin applying these in our next lesson with projectile motion. Okay, so homework read pages 102 to 108, 102 to 108. On page 109, answer questions 8 to 12. Page 109, answer questions 8 through 12. All right, we'll take a look at that in our next lesson. We'll also take a look at those quizzes that you took. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and you are dismissed.